Hi, this is Miranda with Magic City Mama, and today I want to do an almost full face of RMS Beauty. Um, but instead of using one of the RMS blushes, I want to use one of these blushes from Phytosurgeons. And I have two colors. I have the color Skin Spark, and I have the color, oh, I'm sorry, Exothermic, which is a Skin Spark, and I have the color Sublimate. So Exothermic looks a little bit more of like a brownie mauve, um, and Sublimate looks a little bit more on the warmer side. Okay, so today I thought it would be interesting if I kind of did like an about me since I just started um, making videos very recently and um, it's mostly just like chatty get readies with me and showing some products that I bought. So, uh, by the way, this is the RMS Beauty Reevolve Radiance Locking Primer and I'm putting that around my face. I kind of meant to put it on the outside because I forgot when I was doing this that I also wanted to use the RMS uh, Master Radiance Base because I really have been liking this. I had got it as a sample and I tried it and then I ended up getting it. So it came with this tiny little scoop and I did do my, my facial prep off camera before. So I'm gonna just use a tiny little bit because I don't wanna to look too oily. I put it on the side of my hand here and just to warm it up. And I like to put that on the high points of my cheeks. And I read online on the reviews that some people were just using this only on their face and like that that was it but I just I couldn't imagine just wearing this uh, maybe just because my skin it, I feel like it just needs a little bit more help and I just wouldn't want to just highlight any skin issues give me one second my dog wants to come in sorry about that I have a dog and he is actually apparently very needy he can't be uh, in a different room than me and I had him outside even though my daughters are both home So as I was saying, uh, today's video, I was going to do maybe a little bit of an about me. Um, so my name's Miranda. I am, geez, I think I'm 45 years old. I actually can't remember now if I'm 44, going to be 45. I think, I think I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to be transparent, but I honestly uh, forgot my own age. I think that's pretty common. I actually know a few people who kind of forget exactly how old they are. Anyway, um, yeah, so at the moment, you know, I just do makeup for fun. I'm a makeup lover, enthusiast, and I also love like spirituality and, you know, manifestation, um, esoterica, all things magical mystical but in my day job what I actually do at this moment is I am an occupational therapist and I have been an occupational therapist for about nine years about nine years now um before that I've had a lot of um you know odd jobs I've been a housewife um have had jobs in the service industry but I am actually a out of practice but trained and previously licensed esthetician so i did go to esthetician school and i was licensed at one point but i didn't end up using it and i've also taken classes on makeup even though you don't really need to take classes to be a makeup artist that was something i thought i might want to do at one point so this is the Reevolve Natural Finish Foundation. And it also has a little twisty top in the color 22. Um, yeah, so I thought maybe I wanted to do, to be an esthetician and a makeup artist. And it just, it didn't work out that way. And I ended up going back to school and doing a master's degree. Um, so I, I have a bachelor's in psychology 
And to be honest with you, I really would have liked to continue and gotten a doctorate in psychology, but I had already had my first child at the time and I didn't uh, want to be in school that long and I had already gotten separated from my ex-husband and I didn't want to do a year, well, I really couldn't do a year long clinical, which is basically, you know, free labor for a year. So you have to work and basically like not get paid for a whole year. And I just couldn't do that with the occupational therapy clinical was only, you know, a three month clinical, which was much more reasonable. <clears throat> and I ended up, you know, getting a job at one of my clinical placements eventually. And um, so I work with children prim primarily, and I've been doing that for about nine years. And I do not regret it at all, but sometimes I still wish that I had done the psychology while I was in school, um, just because I still wish I could do it. I just really can't just stop working though right now. Um, so I had been seeing like some hypnotherapy courses, which I thought were kind of interesting um, as a as something to maybe do in, in lieu of psychology and do some kind of therapy. Because what, what I really wanted to do was be like a therapist. Um, and anyway, I have some singing bowls and crystals and whatnot. And I kind of wanted to like incorporate all that stuff together in with like talk therapy. Um, I also am a um, Reiki master. So I do have my level three Reiki. And yeah, so I was thinking of like incorporating like all of those elements into some kind of therapy sessions eventually. So maybe I, I still might do that. But makeup, you know, um, has always been a, an interest of mine. I would say even since I was young like very young like i think i was wearing makeup to school when i was in middle school like 12 years old i couldn't recall wearing like foundation and brown eyeshadow um you know i was always interested in those kinds of things fashion makeup art in my school in pennsylvania <laughs> i was like you know one of the first people to wear like blue and black nail polish and you know I was always getting teased for those things and now it's just like so commonplace and nobody would bat an eyelash at you wearing green nail polish but back when I was young and I was doing it you know I would get teased sometimes for doing those things times have changed in that way I feel like they've definitely changed for the better and people are more free to uh, express their individuality and their own personal style now than they ever have been before. And they're also more able to experiment without worrying about people, you know, teasing them. Just, just so lame. Yeah, probably because I, I did, you know, go from um, New, New York, you know, in the state I was born um to a small town in the Poconos so it was a bit of a culture shock yeah this is just a benefit eyebrow pencil I think I've said this before it's not anything special it wasn't my favorite or anything it just I just have these so I'm gonna bring myself up close this is my base at the moment very very luminous so i think i'm gonna put um i have milk makeup the future fluid concealer i think i'm gonna add some of that and just to some spots and maybe that'll also take down some of the luminosity in some areas and i'm so sorry i do not have any 
special camera equipment. I am really just doing this because to be honest with you, it was just always something I've always wanted to do. I've always want, thought, you know, like I could totally make videos. I could totally do my makeup and, and you know, the kind of um, videos I like sometimes are just people talking because I, I just, I find it very relaxing. Sometimes I just let them play in the background and I don't know, I find it very soothing. Like I don't need any kind of like sensationalism or, you know, of course I like some products I'm interested in, I will probably watch that video. But if I just like somebody's personality, I'll just watch their videos just to kind of like hang out with them. You know, I don't know if anybody else is like that. I really don't know what's what's like cool or trending. I think I'm a, I'm a little beyond that and at this point in my life. I'm just trying to do what makes me happy as long as I'm not hurting anyone. You know? We should all do a little bit of what makes us happy. Oops, just dropped that. All right, so I'm looking for my beauty blender. I'm just gonna push that in. And I feel like that um, concealer went in pretty flawlessly. I don't have the RMS concealer just because I have so many concealers right now. I have so many concealers. Where's the one? Yeah, I have like all these concealers. I don't know. I, I Like I, th I said in another video, I'm always like wanting to try new concealers. Used to be I always wanted to try new eyeshadows. <laughs> um, but as I get older, even even though I do love eyeshadows, I'm like more interested in like um, the actual face products than about anybody else. All right, so here's my face. Very shiny. I think I might have to, I think I have a little bit of the radiance base poking through here. So I'm just gonna kind of blend that in a little bit more. The one thing I was worried about when I saw the color on this, I was like, I'm a, I'm pretty pale. So it's, it's definitely like a, a goldy <clears throat> nude color. And I was a little bit nervous that it was going to be too dark. So, I, and I was kind of looking for something more on the white side, um, just to give me that really bright, bright shine. And I did get the Luminator X Quad and I was using that for a while, a lot as well. All right, so now I'm going to powder my face. I'm gonna use the Linda Hallberg blotting powder. I have the little triangle puff and I'm gonna go under the eye just to kind of set. So yeah, where was I? Um, so yeah, I, I have taken Cosmetic classes. I was licensed as an esthetician. I did not practice with the under those licenses. I didn't, you know, become an esthetician. I did go back to school and got a master's degree in occupational therapy. And I've been doing that for at least nine years, working with children, mostly children with special needs. I have an interest in healing. Mm, meditation, spirituality, esoterica, you know, probably I have been interested in like tarot cards and things like that and crystals uh, growing up <clears throat> and it just is a continuation of that. I never, I never really stopped liking those things. So I may have like done less of something, uh, you know, not not done it as often or done other things so like you know when you have kids sometimes you more focused on things that are very grounding just 
you know, day-to-day -day life. And, um, you know, maybe I wasn't doing certain things as much. But then as your kids get older and things settle down, uh, you become more of who you are again. You know, and I don't know if, the, if any other moms out there. Let me see, which one do I want? I think I want to do this one. If any moms out there have experienced this, I became a mom, let's see, for the first time 17 years ago. And... I found it to be a little bit, actually, no, you know what? I want to do the other one. I don't know. I thought, I found it to be a little bit like you really kind of lose touch with who you were as a person and you become just like super focused on being mom. And I had um, become friends with a mom group that I had met through like, mommy and me yoga <clears throat> and it was like i would call it like the crunchy mom group you know the organic crunchy mom group and i just felt like all we ever talked about was mom stuff was baby food and reusable diapers and i don't know like, they were very nice and everything and welcoming and I spent time with them. But they just weren't, like, my my soul tribe. I guess we just were mostly hanging out because, you know, we were all moms. And I feel maybe like I lost myself in that a little bit, you know. Uh, I became so focused on that. And I was always doing stuff with my daughter and which I don't regret, you know, giving her all that time because I was a stay at home mom with my first um, and actually nursed her for two years. And we did all the classes, you know, the gym, the swimming, the art classes, the music classes. And you know she's she's a very intelligent young lady uh and she is also diagnosed with asd um i don't know if this is a still acceptable term but it i guess high functioning asd and i know i've heard some people say like they don't like the term high and low functioning um but that's how i know it as um yeah but she's uh still in high school she works she has a job And then my second is eight. And I feel like with my second, I was already working because I had to be working. And I didn't uh, nurse her as long, but I did do a year. Um, I felt like maybe a little bit more myself at that point because I feel like with your second, it's different. With your first, you're very like over the top, you know, trying to make sure everything is perfect. And with the second, you're a little bit more confident and relaxed and you're not so stressed out about everything. Which might even be better in some ways. Because, oh, this is the Fenty Beauty um, matchstick in amber. And I just want to do a little sculpting today. I've seen a lot of funny videos on like parents, first child versus second child. Okay. So now I'm gonna take a little small brush and I'm gonna go in and just kind of Spread that out. So today is, what day is today? Today is Saturday after Thanksgiving. And I already started putting out my Christmas decorations. I put out my little tree, but I told my youngest today we were gonna put up the big tree. So I have an artificial tree. I have a, actually, I have a pink tree. Um, I do it with flamingos 
and I used to never be the type of person that liked to use an artificial tree. I just thought it was like, ugh. And I had a friend like convince me like, it's actually a pretty convenient. It's actually really nice just to be able to like put your tree up the day you want, not have to worry about anything and take it down whenever you want, you know, like I used to always like the whole experience and the fresh Christmas tree smell, which I really do love. That's like one of the things I miss about the real Christmas tree. So I'll usually <laughs> get some of those candles that smell, that have that Christmas tree smell, just so I can have that. But it is convenient. And I don't know, maybe it has, you know, less of an environmental impact, maybe. I don't know. Because I'm going on year, what is this, year three with the same tree. So it's not like something I would buy and then throw in the trash right afterwards. It's, I usually reuse things as many times as possible, like to a fault. Okay, sometimes maybe I wonder if I put that a little too low on this side. So eventually I'd like to get a better camera because I am actually using my iPhone 12 to make these videos and an app on the phone. I do have like some cherry angiomas. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that, but they're hereditary. My dad gets these. They're like little um, places on the skin where the capillaries um, come out or the arteries come out, the little ones, on the surface of the skin. And it's almost like a little beauty mark, but it's red. It's like, you know, red, red. And I've always hated those. I've always felt like insecure about those. Um, you know, you can like cauterize them and get them removed. And I would probably like to do that one day. Um, but I have them like, you know, different places. My dad has a lot of them and some of them are really big. I've had like a couple removed that were like a little itchy for some reason. Okay, so more about me. I don't know. I don't know what else to talk about. Um, I'm a single mom, so there's that. Here's, do I want to wear this one? This is a lipstick that they gave me for free. I don't know, it was from the Black, early Black Friday sale. And they said it was worth $70. I don't know about that. What do you think? I know those little Westman Atelier lip palettes are like $80 and they don't even come with a brush. And this one comes with a brush. So I think I'm going to try it. I feel like it's just going to be very see-through. Yeah, I was born <clears throat> in the Bronx and I lived there for the first 10 years of my life. And I have to say those were really fun times. You know, like I grew up in the 80s and back then I'm Generation X, obviously, so things were very different for us than they are for kids today. And I feel like kids today, even though they have so much stuff uh, and, you know, so many things and everything is so child-oriented these days, um, which it was definitely not when I was growing up, I feel like I was luckier and more privileged than kids are today. Because I just got to have so many more experiences and I got to experience so much more of life rather than being stuck indoors on a video game. And yeah, see, I don't like that color. I'm not into pink. I think I'm going to add some of the 
purple. I'm just going to go with my finger. And then I might wear a gloss on top. So back in the days when I was growing up and I lived in, in New York, I used to just in the summertime go outside with my bicycle and all the kids on my block. We all had bicycles and we literally called ourselves a bicycle gang and we just would bike all around the neighborhood, um, go to the park, um, hang out all day outside. And if the Mr. Softy guy came, like the ice cream truck would come, our parents would like, if we're lucky, throw some money down from the window. And that was basically it. It's like, so our parents would just be in their apartment and just keep the window open. And if they need you, they just scream. And when the and when the ice cream guy came, like they would just throw like maybe a dollar with some quarters inside and throw it down. <laughs> uh, those were the best days. And you really stayed outside until the street lights came on. You know, it was time for dinner and your parents screamed for you. Okay, so I don't have any really eye products for this brand. I have like an eye gloss, which I am not terribly crazy about, but I can use it. It just gives like a very subtle wash of color. And this is it right here. I have pink sweatpants on today and I think I'm taking my daughter to the park. So I'll just put that on. Uh, you know, and I felt like we just, I mean, we really just navigated things ourselves. We got along for the most part. You know, if we had our little petty differences, we figured it out. We worked it out. We didn't have the, these helicopter parents interfering with every last thing, you know. And then after that, we moved to Pennsylvania. And that for me just was not the best time for me. It was a very big culture shock. Uh, I became like the center of being bullied and picked on because I was different. I did not grow up with the rest of the kids there who had known each other since like birth basically and half of them were cousins. Uh, and I was um, Hispanic. So yeah, that's another thing I'm, in case you want to know, my parents are Puerto Rican, American. Um, so yeah, they would ask me if I was Mexican because apparently that's the only Latin country that that they know about. So um, also because I didn't shave my legs and I got teased about that. And, you know, so I just, it was just a really icky time um, from middle school basically to high school. And I would have to ride the bus every day for 30 minutes both way, you know, 30 minutes one way to school, 30 minutes one way back. And the kids that lived in my little area they were all really mean and like gross and it was like a lot of boys would pick on me like older boys and, and that's just really creepy like a bunch of older boys picking on a young girl about how her body looks you know just completely inappropriate and back then I was really shy and and timid and so I just would you know just sit there every day dealing with it that's why I I hate bullies I hate bullying I hate bullies and I would never be a bully or condone bullying of any kind. It's just, to me, completely gross behavior. And it just shows me that, you know, you're just a really insecure person. Or something bad is going on in your life. Um, Alright, I'm gonna just put on some eyeliner and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. So for eyeliner today, I have two. Oh boy, where did I put them? I thought they were right here. I have two RMS eyeliners. I have the new RMS uh, Straight Up Mascara, and I'm gonna use that on the upper lids. This has a really fat brush, and then this is the older one that's, you see it's real skinny, and um, I don't know what it's called, D Mascara, but the brush is tiny, but I thought it wasn't too bad to use on the lower lashes. So another thing I really enjoy a lot is pets 
and animals and cats in particular. So I have three cats at the moment. Yeah, so here's the brush. You'll see it's, it reminds me of like one of those Maybelline or CoverGirl mascara, the old school ones, the, blood, the, the shape of the brush, just a big fat brush. And that is how it looks. Um, it's fairly new. So I find that sometimes with mascaras, they need a little bit of a chance to kind of like dry out a little bit, just a tiny bit. But I haven't really had any issue with clumping. And this is a peptide mascara. So supposedly it's going to be good for my actual eyelashes. Yeah, so I have three cats. One of them is really old. He's a super senior. I have a dog who's also pretty old at this point. And my oldest daughter has a bearded dragon. And my littlest has two fish that we've managed to keep alive. Now for quite a bit of time. So sorry, that's my oldest cat, if you hear him because the door's closed and all of a sudden he wants to go out of the room. And then when I let them out and they want to come back in, you know, normal cat stuff. And this is the brush from the other one, the old mascara. And this one came with the, if you see my previous video, I believe this one came with the mystery box, which ended up being just a lot of stuff. I felt like they were trying to get rid of because they made new stuff, but it's not so bad on my lower lashes, it's very natural, but I feel like it does give a good, sorry, a good coloring and coating and it lengthens a little bit and it doesn't leave raccoon eyes. So yeah, yes, Wolfie, I'll be there in a second. So yeah, I need to go, but that's my about me. And this is my almost full face of RMS beauty. And I am gonna go outside. I live in a very hot, humid climate. So I guess I'll see how it wears um, today. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I've gotta go let out my cat now, okay? Bye.